Our first reading for today is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Our second reading comes from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 13 through 15. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. You were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become enslaved to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace. Amen. If my math is right, this past Thursday, we marked the 248th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. While the assertions and the claims in it contain the work of committees, it primarily fell to Thomas Jefferson to draft the verbiage that would become the source document of the country. Most of us can probably recite the following line from its introduction. Feel free to recite along with me. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The freedoms that come with such liberty created by God and as claimed by the Continental Congress 248 years ago are what bound the inhabitants of those 13 colonies together. And that freedom has been wrestled with ever since. Today, we'll continue wrestling with this profound truth about our identity, not just as Americans, though, but first, as Jefferson described, as those united by God's love through Christ. We are created to be free. This freedom is not just a political concept or a personal desire. It's a divine gift and a calling. For freedom, Christ has set us free. This was Paul's declaration to the early church. But he continues, for the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Paul's message to the Galatians emphasizes that our freedom in Christ is not a license for self-indulgence, but a call to love and serve others. This freedom was profoundly articulated by Martin Luther in his treatise, The Freedom of a Christian. Luther wrote famously, a Christian is perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to to all. This paradox encapsulates the essence of Christian freedom. 
It liberates us from the bondage of sin and law, yet binds us in loving service to our neighbors. Now, Luther expands on this, doct- in, on this in his doctrine of justification by faith alone. He argues that through faith in Christ, we receive the favor or righteousness of God. This, this righteousness is not earned by our deeds, but given to us by grace. And thus we are freed from the impossible task of achieving perfection through our efforts. And this freedom, however, doesn't mean that we're free to do whatever we please. Rather, it means that we're free to live as God intended, in love and service to others. 248 years after the inauguration of the American experiment, the rise of Christian nationalism presents a distorted view of freedom. Christian nationalism conflates faith with political power and cultural dominance. It seeks to impose a particular version of Christianity on society often at the expense of others' rights and freedoms. As readily evidenced in the news from around the country, this ideology can lead to exclusion and division and even violence. But contrary to this, true Christian freedom calls us to humility and service. It challenges us to resist the temptation to wield power for our own benefit and instead use our freedom to uplift others. Author and theologian Brian McLaren asks, how might Christians in the United States offer a better model for living free? One that is characterized by humility, service, and love rather than power, control, and fear. His question invites us to reflect on how our our faith can model a more authentic freedom that aligns with Jesus' teachings. To answer this, we first have to recognize that freedom in Christ is fundamentally about relationship. It's about being in a right relationship with God and with others. Over the last two years, I've been drilling into our confirmation students that my definition of sin is anything that harms or breaks our relationships with God and with one another. When we accept that God has already forgiven us for the harms that we have done, then we are freed to love God fully and to love our neighbors as ourselves. This love is not a passive feeling, but an active commitment to the well-being of others. And it involves acts of kindness justice and compassion. Consider the example of Jesus as described by Paul in the letter to the Philippians, who embodied this perfect freedom. Jesus, though God, did not cling to the divine privilege, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. He loved and served others, even to the point of death on a cross. His life and ministry were marked by a radical inclusivity and compassion, especially for the marginalized and the oppressed. In Jesus, we see that true freedom is not about asserting our rights or dominance, but about self-giving love. Now, in our own lives, living out this freedom can take many forms. It might mean advocating 
for the rights of those who are oppressed or marginalized. It might involve acts of service and kindness in our communities. It might also mean standing against the forces of division and hatred, like the rising threat of an anti-American Christian nationalism. And true freedom calls us to seek justice for those who are denied it. This might involve working to dismantle systems of oppression and inequality, whether in our local communities or in the larger society. And it requires us to speak out against injustices and to stand in solidarity with those who are suffering. You can probably name at least a few of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson, Adams, both Samuel and John, right? Ben Franklin, and of course, the big one on top, who was that? John Hancock, right? But among these famous names was also William Whipple. Raise your hand if you ever heard of William Whipple. There's a couple back there. Yeah, all right. I'm, I have faith in the education system in the White Bear Lake School District. <laughs> William Whipple was one of the delegates from New Hampshire. And Whipple had gained his stature as a successful ship's captain and a trader. He made his fortune shipping three commodities important to the colonies and to their masters across the ocean. Wood, rum, and slaves. As he contemplated the claims that Jefferson had drafted into the document that he was about to sign, Whipple wrote to another delegate, Josiah Bartlett. He wrote, this year my friend is big, with mighty events. Nothing less than the fate of America depends on the virtue of her sons. And if they do not have virtue enough to support the most glorious cause ever human beings were engaged in, they don't deserve the blessings of freedom. Whipple's own slave, Prince, followed his master into service into the Continental Army. He is famously depicted in the painting of Washington crossing the Delaware. During the war, he joined with other slaves to petition for their freedom by writing to the New Hampshire legislature, quote, God of nature gave them life and freedom upon the terms of the most perfect equality with other men. That freedom is an inherent right of the human species not to be surrendered. Shortly thereafter, William Whipple made Prince a free man. Today, let's pray for the strength to live out this true freedom, to stand firm against the forces that seek to distort it and to embody the love and humility that God calls us to. May our lives be a testament to the liberating power of God's grace, offering a beacon of hope and a model of authentic freedom in our world. Thanks be to God. Amen.